Hi everyone. My name is Carol Smith and I'm an open source program manager at Microsoft. And I'm here today to talk to you about a project that we've been working on that is an incubator project under the OSI called Clearly Defined. So as some, most, maybe all of you know, when you use a FOSS project, it comes with certain responsibilities. And those responsibilities are laid out in that project's license. And if you're using maybe a handful of FOSS components or projects, uh, maybe it's not so hard to keep track of those responsibilities and to make sure that you're adhering to all of them. But what if you're maybe a larger organization or you're an open source project that's building on other FOSS projects? And what if you're using thousands of components or maybe hundreds of thousands of components or millions? Uh, at this scale, it becomes much more challenging to keep track of all your responsibilities and to make sure that you're adhering to them. And this is a challenge for FOSS consumers. It can be difficult to discover the copyright and the license for all of these projects and to make sure that they're all correct and to have confidence in the quality of the data that you're getting. Many FOSS projects are not clearly licensed or don't have clear copyright information in the cases where you still have to make sure that you have all of that information. And if you, again, are maybe an organization that is trying to keep track of a lot of FOSS components that your organization is using, it can be very difficult to get the resources to do this compliance work. It can be difficult to get the tooling in place, to get the engineers to uh, work on the compliance systems and to make sure that it all stays up to date and has the best quality data about the all of the FOSS that you're using. And this is difficult, as I said, at numeric diversity, so uh, when you're talking about hundreds of thousands or millions of components, and it's also difficulty at scale when you're talking about diversity across ecosystems. So different package managers work in different ways, and it can be difficult to keep track of all of that. And this can also be very duplicative resource intensive work. Often you can find out the license and copyright and source information about 100,000 components on day one, and then your dependencies change, and you have new projects that you need to find out the license information for. And again, it can be quite, quite difficult, quite resource intensive, and quite duplicative. And this is a problem for FOSS projects because when there isn't clarity, it creates friction, and it can be difficult for a person who doesn't have confidence in how you are licensed, how your project is licensed, to feel confident in using your project because they may not be adhering to the license of your project, even if they think they know what the license is. And if they don't have confidence, that might reduce adoption of your project or engagement in your project or in your community. And this demand for rigor takes resources and, and expertise and compliance. And this is not only difficult for FOSS projects in terms of adoption, but it's also difficult for FOSS projects who are building on other FOSS projects. So as a FOSS project, you are yourself using open source and you so you are a consumer. And so when you are not clear about the license of the open source that you are using, then it is not clear when you release your project what all of the open source that you've built on and how it is licensed. And so you inherit the issues of the dependencies that, that you have, and then you pass those on to the people who are using your FOSS project. And then there's lack of clarity throughout the entire pipeline. And so because this is such a challenge, uh, a huge industry has been built up around this problem around the compliance space. And there are lots and lots and lots of projects in this space that are all complementary and are all trying to solve slightly different problems. And some are meant to work together, some are meant to work independently, uh, but there's uh, lots and lots of projects in this space that are all focused on slightly different things. But Clearly Defined is interested only in the data. Um, these projects are all complementary and work well with Clearly Defined, but Clearly Defined is focused on, on one thing and one thing only, which is the data itself and having high quality data and giving our users confidence in that data. And specifically, we are interested in three pieces of information about FOSS projects. We are interested in what is its license, 
what is its source location and what is its copyright information? Because those are the three pieces of information that our users need in order to meet their compliance responsibilities in whatever tooling and whatever system that they're using. And this is a difficult problem, but it also means that it's a problem that open source is really well suited to face. Uh, if this is an open source problem, it's an open source uh, it's a it's a problem that can be solved with open source. Um, this is a problem that everyone in this open source ecosystem is facing, and so it is a community problem. And we think it is a community solution that we can bring to it. We want to bring crowdsource crowdsourcing and transparency and other philosophies in open source to this project. So let me talk a little bit about how this works. We are interested in a process that involves three parts, uh, harvesting, curating, and contributing. The first part is harvesting. So we go off to the public internet and we run tools on open source components in order to discover what their license, source location, and copyright information is. We are running a system that is able to take these packages from, from the open source providers where they are, from the package managers where they are, and run the best quality open source tools in a transparent way on these open source components to discover what their license, what their source location, and what their copyright information is. And there are lots and lots of these tools that are out there, and we are running a lot of them. Scan code, Fossology, Licensee, the list goes on and on. So we run all of these tools, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to discover the best quality information and aggregate all of that information about these FOSS components so that we're able to create what we call a definition of the open source component, which is its license, its copyright information, and its source location, and we can then provide that to our users. Um, but as you may know, even the best automation and even the most tools run in the most transparent way sometimes has missing or ambiguous information. And so that's where the second part of the process comes in. We are interested in providing all of the data that we have out to the public and then allowing it to be curated by humans in cases where the information needs to be fixed up for some reason. And we want to do this also in a crowdsourced and transparent way. So not only are we providing the data that we're getting from the automated tools, but we're providing that data to the public and then providing a mechanism through which it can be curated. So we put all of the data in the public on our website and then people can come along and modify that data. So for example, to change the license from MTI to MIT, for example, if they're with a typo, and then to create a pull request on GitHub that is able to be reviewed and commented on by other people in the FOSS ecosystem to, to improve the quality of the data. And in cases where the PR, the curation that the person has created is correct and the community agrees that it is correct, the PR is merged. And then the data in clearly defined is augmented and updated. And so our users will then have the benefit of these curations to provide even better data around these open source components. And we don't want to start, stop there either. We're not just interested in creating a larger and larger database of these FOSS components and keeping it. We're interested in contributing those PRs and those changes back upstream to the original projects. So we are interested in making a, a effort with the upstream project to say, we have had curations, for example, on your version 1.1 of your FOSS component. And we think that the license is MIT, not MTI, as was listed on your component. If you agree that that's the case, we have a PR here that you can merge to update your project upstream. And then in future versions, you will be more clearly defined and we won't need to do curations on, on future versions. And this is meant to be a virtuous cycle. And so over time, as we do more of these curations, as the data quality of the data is improved, and as the community of our users looks at more, uh, more of the data and, and curates it in cases where it needs to be, and those are contributed upstream, the open source ecosystem as a whole components across the board become more clearly defined and this is able to be derived more and more from tooling and doesn't need to doesn't need to be done uh, by humans. 
So there's a few things about the project I'd love to tell you about. So I, I mentioned already that this is an incubator project under the OSI. We have been with the OSI since the project was launched and OSI is the home where uh, the project is is kept and our, our finance and financial uh, resources are, are kept. Um, from the beginning, we've always felt that Clearly Defined aligned incredibly well with the OSI's mission of stewarding open source and its licenses. Um, because the OSI's core mission is around clear licenses and, and what the open source uh, definition is and stewarding that, we always felt like Clearly Defined was, was well aligned with that. And so we wanted to make Clearly Defined uh, have its home at, at OSI from the beginning, and so we have. Um, we also love being with OSI because it is a vendor and community neutral home. One of the important philosophies around Clearly Defined is that we don't think this is anyone's opinion. We don't want this to be any organization's reflection on the data. These are simply facts about the, about the FOSS components that we have been able to derive from tooling or from human curation. Uh, this is not a good or bad judgment, and this is not, I think that this might be the license, but I'm not sure. It's We want to base it on on facts, and, and we want it to be neutral to both communities and to, to vendors. Um, and Clearly Defined operates like any other open source community. We have a community of folks who are engaged in the project. We'd love to, to have you join as well if you are interested. Uh, but it is also a, a project that works out in the open and is a collaboration amongst lots and lots of organizations as well as individuals. And it is meant, again, to be vendor and community neutral. We have some some core principles and, and one of them is actually related to the title of this talk, which is how would you like us to list your license? One of our, our core guiding principles is that we want to create tooling that best uh, gets the best quality data from these open source projects. We don't want to tell open source projects how they should work or ask them to, to, to do additional work in order to accommodate Clearly Defined. In fact, we want the reverse. We want Clearly Defined to accommodate what the community norms around licenses are. And so we want to learn more and more about how communities are operating and what is standard and typical for the way that they make their license source location and copyright information available in their communities. And then we want the tooling to adjust and to suit those communities so that we get the best quality data when we go and, and find those open source packages and, and scan them and provide the data to, to our users. Um, and as I mentioned, we want, always want to work upstream with the with the projects, not not just uh, with what their community norms are and how to get the best data around the open source that they're producing, but also to create PRs and to work with them in whatever way makes sense to get our contributions to uh, make the data better in cases where where it's appropriate with them as well, um, and and we want to meet them where they where, where they are on that. Um, we also have a guiding philosophy that we want all of this to be completely open. So it's not just uh, the project itself, but it's every individual part. So the data itself is open. How the each of the tools that we ran and what the conclusions they came to about what the license is, all of the reports that are run by our automated tooling are all completely open and available so that someone could um, do replicate the entire process of getting the same data that we did from start to finish so that it is all clear and there is no ambiguity about how we came to a conclusion or a fact about the open source that we are about the data that we are providing about that open source component. Um, all of the infrastructure is is open and all of the processes the cur around the curation uh, and around our community uh, working together is all open. Um, and as I said before, all of the data is factual. This is not uh, an interpretation or a judgment. Um, even in the cases where we, we are having humans do curations, those humans and those PRs need to be based on facts. So for example, um, I have, uh, you know, they have to provide a link to a mailing list where the project was relicensed and what, what the conversation was um, about that relicensing and make it clear that, that the community wanted that relicensing and this is why, for example, maybe the data was, was amb ambiguous before. Um, it always has to be based on facts. It can't be someone's judgment uh, and it can't be an interpretation. Um, we also have a guiding principle that we want things to be simple as well. The uh, infrastructure and the tooling 
we run to get the data is is quite quite simple and it's meant to be as well as all of the processes. We don't we don't want this to be uh, complex and we and we always make choices that are in the interest of simplicity, clarity um, and quality uh, over over other things. Uh, and finally, I mentioned this before, but um, it's quite important to us that all of the community processes and the entire on all of the data be completely neutral. We don't have a affiliation or a company company dri driven focus, and this is another uh, reason again that we are with the OSI. Um, I'll talk just for a minute about how the process actually works. So uh, as I mentioned on the on the far left of your screen, you'll see the package managers and the ecosystems that uh, we, we want clearly defined to work in. There's actually, in, in fact, uh, many more ecosystems that are represented by the data that we haven't clearly defined now, but this is, this is just an example of some, some of them. Um, so these are all places where open source packages live. And we again go to the public internet and we take down those those packages and then we call that process harvesting and we uh, open up those packages, those binaries, whatever they may be, and we scan them. We run we run tools on them. So it's things like scan code and fossology and licensee and others. And we run all of the all of these tools in an effort to again get the best data that we can. Uh, and then that is uh, publicly available uh, right right from the get-go. So as soon as we get the the information and we are we are done scanning, we make it publicly available on our website and VR APIs, um, and and that's available to users from from there. Uh, but then in the middle, you can see that again, in some cases, uh, even the publicly available best information we have from all the tooling might be in, for some reason ambiguous or or missing, and so we have this curation process that also come comes into it. So there are people who are able to make changes via our website or via our API to the data that we have. Um, those curation PRs are, are literally P, uh, pull requests on, on GitHub that people create in the process of, of making these changes. Uh, and those are publicly available to the community. And we have processes around how curations are reviewed and then how they are merged. So the only people who are allowed to merge uh, curations are curators who are well established in our communities. You can think of them sort of like uh, any FOSS project maintainer. So they're people who have established a reputation as being uh, knowledgeable in this, um, but it's not just that they are allowed to just merge a PR as soon as it is available. PRs that have to also be reviewed by the curation community, who are a group of like-minded folks who understand uh, how these how these um, how this data works and and how the curation process works, in more generally. And they review the PRs. You can never review your own PR, and you can never merge your own PR. So it has to be reviewed by by someone else, and someone else has to validate that yes, they believe that this curation is in fact a a quality curation. This is a a factual change to the the project in some way that that makes sense. Um, and then if the PR is merged, that information is then augmented onto the data for clearly defined. Um, and as I as I mentioned, we also intend for these PRs to then be contributed upstream in a way that makes sense with the community that we are working with upstream. But we generally believe that if these are indeed uh, the proper changes, these are these are the right changes to these FOSS projects that they should be contributed back upstream. We don't simply want to be maintaining a larger and larger database of changes that are uh, may be correct, but are not actually reflected in the upstream project. We want the upstream projects to, in future versions, be more clearly defined, and for the ecosystem as a whole uh, to be to have more high, to have higher quality data about about their projects. Um, and just a, a couple minutes on on a few other things. So first of all, this reaches farther than just uh, clearly defined in this license information. We also have a concept of scoring. So how clearly defined a, any given project is, and we intend to try to to work to, as I said, over time have ecosystems be more clearly defined. For example, if you're if you say that your license is MIT, do we see the MIT license somewhere in your project? This is uh, one of the components of of how your project is is scored um, and this this can give 
uh, consumers better confidence. Um, we also think that there are other places that clearly define may be able to go in the future. We are focused right now just on licensed data, but in the future we think that it might be interesting to provide security information, accessibility information, localization information about, about these projects. We're interested more, more broadly in facts about FOSS projects that can be conveyed through through their metadata. And right now we are focused on, on license information, but in the future we, we hope to focus on other things. And you can help Clearly Defined. Uh, there are lots of things you can do. First of all, you can go to the website right now, clearlydefined.io, or you can go to our GitHub, which is github.com slash clearly defined. Um, and please use the data. We have APIs available uh, for, for you to use the data, and we want you to contribute to it as well in the cases where uh, you see a problem. Please do curations. You can do a curation right now on your favorite FOSS project at clearlydefined.io. If you see something that's, that's missing or ambiguous, you can make a contribution right now. Um, and please donate to the OSI. You can make a charitable donation to OSI right now, and you can have it be for Clearly Defined if you would like to see us in the future uh, do more work in this space. Um, and you can make your project more Clearly Defined. So please make it available, uh, the information, like the license source location and copyright information about your project uh, in a clear way. And please make sure that you are, are Clearly Defined uh, in, in your, in the rest of your uh, project's ecosystem. Um, and please join our community as well. We'd love to have you help us drive policies, process, and direction. Um, so with that, I will finish it up. You can email me at carols at microsoft.com. I'm at Fossey Girl without an I on Twitter, and you can find Clearly Defined at Clearly Deft. And I will take questions now. So thank you very much. Ah, so question is, uh, it, I'm a repo maintainer and your bot starts sniffing and analyzing my repo. Does that activity necessarily notify me? Uh, no, we don't do any uh, any sniffing or analyzing of your repo. So um, we pull down packages from the package managers directly and, uh, and then we do all of our work in our own uh, cloud infrastructure. Uh, so it will not affect you at all. Uh, we do have our own sort of um, processes uh, with GitHub and, and how we do uh, source location um, and uh, and get and we examine your Git history, but uh, no, it will not affect you at all. Uh, you probably won't notice if we're uh, if we're analyzing you. Um, the, probably the better, uh, the more, if you're interested in clearly defined and seeing if you're clearly defined uh, is to go to our website and to actually check for your package. Um, so you'd look for for whatever your uh, your thing is and see if we have a license, a source location and a copyright uh, for for your whatever component you're main, maintaining or project you're maintaining. Uh, question is, have you seen any problems with older code or dead authors and trying to ascertain the license? Um, so uh, I don't think we've, we see things specifically with older code or death, dead authors. So, so we don't have a lot of um, analysis that tells us why something isn't uh, clearly licensed or why the license is ambiguous. We simply see the result that it is um, it is unclear or it is ambiguously licensed um, kind of at the at the end of the process. And so then we we uh, go and we do the curation to to fix it up. Uh, but uh, a lot of the the why is is sometimes can be unclear to us. Uh, actually, as well, since uh, we're kind of doing the same thing that the the public does, which is if the public is uh, if it's available on a on a public package manager um, and somebody sees that it doesn't have a license, we see that it doesn't have a license, uh, but we don't know specifically why. What is the next big thing Clearly Defined needs to add? Uh, so one of the, the most common requests uh, we get from our users is uh, we've got lots of folks who are using our public API right now, which is great. Uh, folks who are just using the data in their, uh, their sort of day-to-day -day processes and their organizations. Uh, but a lot of folks for one reason or another for security reasons or because they don't want to take a dependency on a public service um, would really like to be able to uh, have a mirror of the data so they'd like to have their own their own copy of the data or their own uh, version of the service that they're running internally to their organization or internally uh, to their project so that they they have the data um, when they when they need it and they uh, only are running it on their own infrastructure and so that's definitely a high priority um, solution that we'd like to to offer our users next 
uh, beyond just the the public API and the way that it's it's working now. I'd say that's that's probably our highest priority addition right now. Please go and uh, check for your your own uh, packages, your own projects on Clearly Defined. Let us know if you don't find your own. Uh, it'd be great for us to know that. And use our data. Uh, so question is, besides curation, what's the biggest opportunity for someone to get involved as a contributor? Uh, there's uh, lots of ways. So we do have a, a Discord channel and a biweekly meeting that we're running right now. So you can lurk in our Discord and or attend the meetings uh, and and contribute to the discussion and to um, our, our roadmap and the things that we're, we're talking about and, and thinking about. Uh, that, that, is a huge, that would be a huge contribution in and of itself. Um, if you are interested in helping uh, clearly define the project itself, so improving, you know, fixing bugs and, and adding features, um, we are uh, an open source project that, uh, like like many, is is looking for uh, developers and folks who want to want to help us uh, with development and, and write code. So uh, it's in Node and React. Uh, I don't know if that uh, persuades you or intimidates you, but uh, that uh, you're we would love uh, patches and pull requests to uh, the project itself. Um, and then uh, it is actually uh, it, it is actually a contribution to use our data. Um, we have uh, 10 million packages right now that we've we've scanned across about uh, 11 different uh, package ecosystems. Uh, but we don't know what we don't know, and so there's going to be lots of places where we still don't have coverage, or we still uh, ecosystems that we still don't uh, know a lot about or have a lot of packages from, and uh, you asking about it and and asking for for data about packages in different ecosystems in different places uh, is absolutely a good way to to contribute to let us know that there's there's interest in this ecosystem or in this kind of package in jQuery of of this variety or uh, whatever whatever you're interested in. Uh, 